Hello everybody, I'm Martin. Today we're here to talk about the XNet mod. And the first thing we should probably discuss is what is the XNet mod? And it's really a logistics mod that helps with item and energy transport or other things, as well as doing some light automation. I should note that this tutorial was specifically made for the 119 version of Minecraft, although it is good for all the way back to 1.12 at least, because the interfaces and the concepts in XNet have not really changed over the years that this existed. So which brings us to the basic tools for XNet. And the very first thing that it all revolves around is the XNet controller. And you just start by putting it down. And I should note that in a vacuum by itself, this does absolutely nothing. If we come in and look at it, you can even see that it doesn't have any power right here at all. And that's actually one of the very first things you're going to need to do to even get started with XNet is bootstrap some power into it from another source. Because XNet doesn't have machines really or power generators of any of its own. So one of the first things you have to do is plug in a battery of some sort into it to give it its initial load of power. Because even if you have it connected to a power source via its XNet cables to bring power into your network to provide power to other machines, until it has some power to start with, it does not work. From there, we also have cables of various colors and then connectors of the same colors as well as advanced versions. These are what you use to connect to your various machines in your network. And I should note that if you have the option, I would choose to use the advanced connector over the basic connector any day. The base connector is actually really, really cheap to make. And the advanced one does diamonds and ender pearls. But there are some additional benefits for using the advanced ones, which we'll get to shortly. And the very first thing we're going to do is put the connector on top of the controller and put the battery on top of that. And we need to shift right click it on because if you just right click the connector, it shows you this where you can name the connector so you can find it more easily in your interface as well as set which directions it's even allowed to use. But once we have that, you can see that the network now has power. It shows the creative energy cube and the controller. Now, the most important concept here is that it has these eight channels. And this is where I think a lot of people have a misconception about how XNet works and what these even are. Because if you've used Applied Energistics, you might be familiar with its concept of channels. And that's wildly different than what it is here. Because what those eight channels in XNet are, are actually eight different pipes that connect in a single block. Sort of like Ender IO, if you're familiar with that. And you go in here and you click on this and it allows you to create a channel that connects to all of the machines in the network down the list. And you can set it to things like energy, logic, which is used for automation, items, which is an item pipe, fluids, which are a fluid pipe, and then others depending on other mods or add-ons that you have available. Like there's a mechanism specific one to pass mechanism gases around. But what I usually do is I always set the first channel to energy because we always want energy going into the controller. And now once you're here, you now have it defined. We click on the energy cube and hit create. And you notice that it has a bunch of stuff in the interface now. And one of the important things is you can tell it which side to pull from if you were using an advanced connector, not the basic one. If you're using the basic one, this is not lit up. And this is important for things like furnaces, which are very specifically sided. Like you can only put in the inputs on the top and the fuels on the side, and you can only extract from the bottom. This lets you cheat and tell it which side you want it to pull from, regardless of where the connector is available. The other thing here, and this is probably the, the other important one, is the insert extract. And we want to actually set this to extract because we want to pull power out of it. These right here are enable on color for the logic channels for automation or outside the scope of this tutorial. Down here, we come down to the controller and we also hit create and we tell it to insert. And because you want the controller to always stay powered, we're gonna set this to a really high number so that it always gets power over all of our other machines or it will shut down the whole thing. We'll have to bootstrap power back in from the outside again. We can also set a rate for how much you can pull in. Uh, advanced ones can prove more power than basic ones. It can go up to 100,000. I believe it's 50,000 otherwise. So that gets us to the part where we have a network and we now have power. But now what we need are some machines to work with here. So what I've set up here is a star of furnaces to set up a basic like super smelter type setup using vanilla mechanics here and to show how the sidedness of all this works. We also created a chest for input and output to show how we can draw from a single inventory. 
Having set these up, we come in here and you can now see that there are a lot more entries in here. And now what we're going to want to do is set up several item channels because one of the things you cannot do in the same channel is both insert and extract from the same interface. And because I've only got the one interface going into all the furnaces, we're going to need multiple channels to do it. So we're going to start with one channel, channel two. We are going to set the priority to round robin because we're going to want it to distribute our load across all the furnaces instead of you know loading up one furnace first and then slowly trickling them into all of the rest. From there, we will go into the chest and we will create another one and we want to extract from here. So the next thing we're going to do is set up a filter for this because we're going to load in all of the things we want to be smelted instead of the fuel at this step. So we're going to actually set it up to tell to use a blacklist instead of the whitelist so that we're going to tell to don't pull coal from this right now because we're going to have it all from the same inventory. We're going to tell it to pull full stacks and we're going to tell it to do it once every five ticks, which is the fastest this can do it at. Otherwise, you can also make it slower by going through the list, right clicking and left clicking. There's other things you could match based off of NBT tags and metadata and all the other stuff to uh, narrow things down or make things more broad as you can work with it. Next, we're going to go into the first furnace and we're going to hit create again. And this time we're going to insert and we want to insert from the top. So we are going to do the up on this one. And we aren't going to change any of the rest of this because this is all exactly what we want to do. And now that we have this set, one of the things we can do is copy either the connector or the channel, the channel being this whole column here, or more importantly, what we need is just the connector. So we can just copy this, go into here and hit paste and repeat through the other two. And there, now that is all set up. Now, if we go into this chest and throw in the coal, nothing happens. But if we throw the iron in, it instantly disappears and it all ends up in this furnace. Now, as I said, we also can't extract it. We do need to put the fuel in from a different one because it has to come in from a different side. So we could have accomplished this by adding more connectors to this. We could put them around the back to also access them from the same channel. But since we have plenty of channels free, it's easier just to do this, set this to item again, extract from the chest again, set it to extract, and then tell it to only pull the coal. All right, now onto the furnaces. And then rinse and repeat, but we want it to do it from the side now. So it doesn't matter which side we use, it all works the same for inputting this. So we can do that, we can then copy the connector and rinse and repeat. Now if we put the coal in the chest, it all slowly gets pulled out because I didn't set it to the max settings. But you can see it getting put into this furnace right here because this is the one that it found first. If I add a bunch more coal, you can see it all gets picked up and then this sits right there. And it has started smelting the iron. Now what it's not going to do is pull the iron out because we, well, we still need to tell it to do that. Now what we're going to need to do is put another chest on this for output because it, we have the filter set up to pull everything that is not coal out of here to be inserted in this. And we don't really want to insert the iron twice. But now you can see that there is another chest here. Now we need to create another channel because we can't both insert and extract from the same entry in the connector. Hit create. And this time we'll tell it to extract from these. Again, pulling the full stack as fast as it can. Copy, paste, rinse, repeat. And this time for this new chest, we will create another one and we'll tell it to insert. And now, and now we're going to be very sad because Ard forgot something basic, which is we need to set this to down on these extracts. Otherwise, it's just going to pull the iron ore back out. But there, now that we've done this, you see that it is pulling the iron ore out as well as the iron ingots. So let's go put that back where it belongs. And that, folks, is it. That's Xnet at its most basic use, which is as a pipe system that allows you to access all of your filters from a single interface. That said, it does require a slow trickle of power to get it started, as well as anything your other machines take in. But once you've got your head wrapped around how to set up the channels, it's actually pretty intuitive. And it's frankly really nice to be able to do it from a single screen that you can place conveniently nearby. Now, the one thing I will say is compared to something like Applied Energistics, this functions best for dedicated subsystems. So things that are relatively self-contained. I personally have used it for like mob farms to pull it to run things like a mob crusher, pull in its drops, and then process them or throw out things that we don't need or uh, a massive ore processing chain that's creating things through like sieves in a skyblock map and then passing it into all of the ore processing or ore multiplication machines that I'm using. Things like that. Things that are like single purpose and dedicated because it becomes very complicated to move things around once you have set them up and laid them out. Because as I showed you, while you can copy the connectors, you then have to paste them back in and make sure you got every single one of them right. It's kind of a pain to move things around on like normal pipe systems. So be aware of that going in.
That said, I would be remiss to mention that this does have a built-in facade system. You use their blocks, you shift right click them to mimic a normal block, and then you can just cl click them right onto the block to make them look like everything else if you want a nice clean layout of some sort. And there, now we have a nice ugly wall obfuscating things with the furnaces not built in facing the wrong ways, and it's just that's completely inaccessible. But that's just how we roll around here. And yeah, that covers most of the actual basics for XNet, and we will come back for more tutorials with some of the advanced features later. Anyhow, if you found this video interesting or entertaining, please leave me a like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.